Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Happy Thursday. So why are the Democrats so angry? We've asked that question a number of times. It doesn't seem to make any sense, truly. In November, the Democratic Party won everything, full control of the federal government. They seethed for years while they were out of power. That made sense. But winning seemed to enrage them even more. Did you watch Democrats on television today at the impeachment hearings? They are crazy person mad, florid faced, irrational, yelling and making threats. It is bizarre. You'd think they get to work fixing the country they inherited. They promised to do that. Instead, they said about breaking things and hurting people. What is going on here? Well, maybe it's intrinsic. There's a certain sort of low character person who becomes more vicious in victory. Power makes them mean. The Ottomans destroyed the cities they captured. There was never a good reason to do this, to kill people who had already been captured and who had surrendered. The Ottomans did it because they enjoyed it. Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi have a little bit of that in them, it looks like. Imagine being Adam Schiff's landscaper or Nancy Pelosi's housekeeper or anyone at their command. Imagine how they treat the staff when no restaurant. How would they tip? You know the answer. They're the kind of people who flatter the boss and scream at the interns. They suck up and they spit down. Jeff Bezos is a god to them. You mean nothing. So naturally, the Democratic Party is constructing a world designed to serve Jeff Bezos. You're an afterthought in that world. If you get in the way, they will punish you. They already are punishing you. Your right to say and think what you want, to read and watch what you want, threatens them above all. Why? Because if you have access to information, you can form your own judgments, judgments that are independent of theirs. A free internet is their enemy. The moment they took power, they began a kind of counter-reformation against the free internet. They started the most sweeping mass censorship campaign in the history of this country, and it's accelerating even now. Yesterday, for example, Google pulled a pro-life news site off of YouTube. Why'd they do that? Simple. Google supports abortion. A lot of big corporations do. Children distract the labor force. If you're raising your family, you are not serving shareholders. Google doesn't want a debate on the subject, so they just shut the debate down. Hundreds of thousands of subscribers to LifeSite News will no longer be watching videos that question abortion because they're not allowed to. Then today, Twitter shut down James O'Keefe's Project Veritas Twitter feed. There was no justifiable reason to do this, but no one in the media asked questions about it or appeared to consider it a problem. Quote, Project Veritas has been known, Politico announced gravely, to spread misinformation. Now, the person who wrote that sentence, a child reporter called Anna, whose Twitter handle brags she went to Cornell, didn't even bother to explain what that so-called misinformation was. But you know what it was. Project Veritas had criticized the people in charge. That's enough now. Anna didn't question that standard. She seemed pleased to play a role in silencing grown-up reporters. She thinks that's her job. Good work, Anna. You work at Politico now. You get to be America's room monitor and tell the rest of us what to say. How empowering. All the child reporters feel that way. That's why they're in favor of it. So Project Veritas is off Twitter tonight, but the Red Guards still aren't satisfied. They will not rest until there is not a single human being remaining in all American media who questions any of the platitudes that Anna and her friends memorized at Cornell in lieu of an actual education. Diversity is our strength. Trans rights are human rights. Abortion is health care. They don't think about it. They just accept whatever the Central Committee decides is the slogan of the day. And anyone who mocks or disagrees with those slogans is silenced. In the name of diversity, we must have uniformity. Well, of all the impediments to achieving this goal of uniformity, those would include centuries of tradition, the First Amendment to the Constitution, the fact this was a free country, of all of those, it's this channel, Fox News, that is the most significant hurdle to getting everyone to sing from the same song sheet. Fox is the last big organization in the American news media that differs in even the smallest ways from the other big news organizations. The only one. That's it. Just us. At this point, there's everyone else in the media standing in crisp formation in their starched matching uniforms and their little caps, patiently awaiting orders from the billionaire class. And then there's Fox News, off by itself, occasionally saying things that are slightly different from everyone else. On Fox, there are still journalists who are willing to think for themselves sometimes and brave enough to say so out loud. It seems like that's what journalism should be. But in 2021, it's a very rare thing. And the oligarchs hate it. Jeff Bezos, for one, has had enough of it. Bezos has sent forth his personal scribes from The Washington Post to make us go away, to end Fox News. On command, they've written a number of columns suggesting that Fox News must be silenced. 
They've gone on television to demand that Fox News is silenced. Here's one of Jeff Bezos' employees. There are other options, including the fact that cable operators uh, like Comcast and Charter, which send Fox out to hundreds of millions of people, they can demand some accountability in the way that Facebook and, and Twitter have done. And there's also, I think, the possibility of reviving the fairness doctrine. There are a lot of ways to silence Fox News, he has explained on television and in columns. But he doesn't call it silencing Fox News. He says, we must demand some accountability. Authorized questions. No more criticizing Jeff Bezos. And he's not the only one saying it. In the last 30 days, a single columnist at the New York Times called Nick Kristoff has written three separate columns demanding that someone please yank this news channel off the air immediately. Just yesterday, Kristoff suggested that this show, the one you're watching, was somehow guilty of terrorism, of violence, something that we've been opposed consistently for four years. How are we guilty of that and why? Well, because Ashley Babbitt, the unarmed protester shot to death at the Capitol on January 6th, apparently watched this show from time to time at 8 p.m. Now, keep in mind that Ashley Babbitt is dead. She paid quite a price for trying to enter the speaker's lobby without permission. And no one mourned her. What kind of country is it, by the way? And we're saying this as a show that was against what they did on January 6th from the second they did it. But what kind of country is it where nobody says, well, wait, that's kind of sad. They shot an unarmed woman? Is that really a death penalty offense? How hard-hearted are we that no one can even acknowledge that's sad, which it is? What kind of country is it where a Republican member of Congress from Oklahoma applauded her death immediately? Nick Kristoff is applauding it, but for Nick Kristoff, her death is not enough. Now we need to ban any television shows that Ashley Babbitt may have watched. We're not even going to rebut that. It's not even worth your time to hear us explain why that is irrational. It's self-evidently irrational. Paul Pot reads the New York Times, therefore we need to close the paper down? John Wayne Gacy liked a Nick Kristoff column, therefore Nick Kristoff is guilty of mass murder? He's a serial killer too? That's what Nick Kristoff is saying. We would never say something like that, ever. It's too stupid. But nothing is too stupid for Nick Kristoff or the New York Times. What Kristoff lacks in reason, he makes up for with vehemence. Nick Kristoff, in the end, cannot stand the idea that someone somewhere might be publicly disagreeing with him. So he's calling for forcible censorship. What would be nice is if he just said it out loud. Yeah, I'm calling for censorship. Be a man about it and admit what you're doing. But of course, he'll never do that. These are not men. These are craven servants of the Democratic Party. They are feline, not canine. All of their aggression is passive aggression. Watch another slope-shouldered tool of the oligarchy feign outrage that we have called censorship what it is. Censorship. Oh, but it's not censorship, he whines. It's harm reduction. And Tucker Carlson is telling viewers that this network, CNN, is trying to force Fox News off the air, which is patently false. But while some cry cancel culture, let me suggest a different way to think about this a harm reduction model. But reducing a liar's reach is not the same as censoring freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is different than freedom of reach. Oh, let me suggest a different model. The harm reduction model. Notice the seductively imprecise language of personal therapy. We're all AOC now. It's all about us. It's not a fascist crackdown on free speech by ruthless and power-mad billionaires. No, not at all. It's just harm reduction, like methadone or Nicorette. It's a way to get better. When they come for you, they will talk like social workers. Guaranteed. 